Hello everyone and welcome to our channel. Today I've got a true crime case that will keep you guessing until the very end. It's about Monica Goad, who was famous for making perfumes. But this story isn't just about her fragrances, it's about something much darker. Get ready for a tale of mystery and suspense that will give you goosebumps. Stick around, because you won't want to miss what happens next. Monica Goad, daughter of former Mumbai judge Ramesh Goad, was known as the queen of fragrance for her expertise in perfumes. Originally a photographer, she switched careers and found success in the perfume industry. In June 2016, she moved into a three-bedroom apartment in Shangonda, near Panaji Goa, in a place called Sapnaraj Bali Society. Despite settling in, she lived alone for a year due to some disputes, running her perfume business from her flat. Her profession made her well-known in society, often interacting with prominent figures. In October 2016, between 9 and 10 in the morning, Monica's maid arrived as usual, but there was no answer when she rang the doorbell. Despite repeated attempts and calling out loudly, there was still no response. Concerned, Monica's brother, Anand Goad, called her mobile phone from Mumbai. With no answer from Monica, Anand then contacted a neighbor who had a spare key to Monica's apartment. The neighbor arrived and, upon opening the door, discovered Monica's lifeless body on the bed, her hands tied behind her back, and no clothing on her lower body. The neighbor immediately called the police, who arrived shortly thereafter. Monica's body was sent for autopsy, and the room was searched, revealing no signs of forced entry. Oddly, there were eggshells in the room, suggesting someone had eaten eggs there. A search of Monica's purse yielded only debit cards. The police attempted to review CCTV footage, but found no cameras in the area. Further inquiries with neighbors yielded no information about suspicious activity around Monica's apartment. Afterwards, the police investigated the possibility of theft, but nothing was found missing from Monica's apartment, suggesting robbery wasn't the motive. They suspected that since there was no forced entry, the culprit likely knew Monica. Initially, suspicion fell on Monica's husband, Bharat Ram Marutham, a renowned photographer from Tamil Nadu. However, his interrogation yielded no suspicious findings. The news of Monica's murder caused a stir in the village, as she was well known, leaving everyone shocked. The case garnered widespread media attention prompting intense public interest in uncovering the culprit. Monica's post-mortem report revealed she died of suffocation after being raped. Despite investigating personal disputes, the police found no evidence of enmity as Monica was friendly with everyone. Their investigation hit a dead end until a police officer remembered finding debit card bills in Monica's room. Upon inquiry, they discovered the card had been used at an ATM in Porvorim on October 6th prompting them to scrutinize CCTV footage. The footage captured the perpetrator, identified as Rajkumar, leading the investigation to Delhi. The former security guard, who had been dismissed from his job two and a half months earlier due to suspicions of theft, became a breakthrough for the Goa police in their investigation. Finally, they had a name and a face to pursue. Upon scrutinizing Rajkumar's background, the police discovered that he was a 21-year-old from Batinda, Punjab, with prior theft offenses on record. Though armed with this information, the challenge remained, how to apprehend him. The Goa police adopted a strategy of patience, awaiting the next transaction on the stolen debit card. Their vigilance paid off when they learned that money had just been withdrawn from an ATM in Bangalore using the card. Without delay, they coordinated with the Bangalore police who examined CCTV footage from the transaction site, clearly capturing Rajkumar's face. Armed with his photo, the Bangalore police began inquiries at hotels and lodges nearby. Their persistence bore fruit when a receptionist at a hotel recognized Rajkumar's photo, confirming that he was indeed staying there, but was currently out. The police covertly stationed themselves at the hotel's reception dressed in civilian attire to avoid arousing suspicion. When Rajkumar eventually returned, he was swiftly identified and apprehended by the waiting officers. 
Just two days after Monica Goad's tragic murder, on October 8, 2016, Rajkumar was arrested from the hotel in Bangalore. Upon interrogation, he readily admitted his identity. Subsequently, the Goa police were informed, and they promptly traveled to Bangalore, obtaining a transi remand from the court to transport Rajkumar back to Goa. The interrogation commenced, and before long, Rajkumar confessed to the heinous crime. When questioned by the police about his motives, Rajkumar recounted his story, which unfolded as follows. The tale began around four months prior, in June 2016, when 39-year-old Monica Goad decided to relocate to Goa to expand her perfume business. She embarked on a search for a rental property in the area. On June 17, 2016, Monica arrived at Shyam Gonda, Shan Jewelry Society to inspect an apartment. At the society's entrance, she encountered the security guard, Rajkumar. Unbeknownst to Monica, the society management had forewarned Rajkumar of her visit, leaving him prepared. Rajkumar proceeded to show Monica the apartment, and upon viewing it, Monica departed. However, during their interaction, Rajkumar developed feelings for Monica which blossomed into a deep infatuation. After 45 days, a car stopped at the gate of Sapna Jewelry and Rajkumar saw Monica arriving there with her belongings. Monica informed Rajkumar that she had taken the light shown to her during the flat viewing. Rajkumar was overjoyed to hear this and felt happy inside. With the help of other people, Monica's belongings were taken to her flat. In the past four or five days, Rajkumar had been constantly thinking about Monica, and her face was imprinted in his mind. After that, Rajkumar began searching for ways to meet Monica more often and see her, but since he was a security guard, he didn't get many opportunities. So he talked to his management and expressed his desire to clean and maintain the society's vehicles after his duty hours. The management agreed to his request, thinking it would help fulfill people's needs, and Rajkumar would earn some extra money. Rajkumar then started cleaning Monica's car regularly. Under the pretext of exchanging keys and cleaning, he would also visit Monica's flat. Although he caught glimpses of Monica, his job was jeopardized one day when Monica's umbrella went missing from her car. When Monica asked Rajkumar about it, he denied any knowledge. Subsequently, Monica complained to the society management about it, expressing her concerns about the rising incidence of theft in the society. The management took the matter seriously and started an investigation. It was discovered that only Rajkumar, besides Monica, opened the gate on Tuesdays for cleaning purposes. After a thorough search, including the premises where Rajkumar lived, Monica's umbrella was found. Suspicion fell squarely on Rajkumar. Consequently, on July 22, 2016, Rajkumar was fired from his job and expelled from Sapna Rajbali because he had severely beaten Monica and she had him fired from his job. This incident filled Rajkumar with a strange kind of anger. After that, Rajkumar leaves from there, and then for a few days, he works as a laborer in the Panda area of Goa. During this time, he meets Monica twice and asks her to withdraw the theft complaint, but Monica flatly refuses. After working there for a few days, he leaves Goa and goes to Chennai in search of a job. Then he goes to Mumbai and then to Pune, doing odd jobs everywhere to make ends meet. But when he doesn't find any decent job anywhere, he returns to Goa on October 2, 2016. The hatred he had for Goa still lingered in his mind. After that, on October 3, 2016, in the afternoon, he reaches Sapna Roj Valley again, where he used to work as a guard. He enters the society from the main gate, and fortunately, nobody notices him. Then he goes straight to the basement of Monica's apartment building. Seeing that Monica's car is not parked there, he understands that Monica is not home. Now Rajkumar decides to wait there for Monica's arrival, instead of leaving. He was also afraid of being caught, so he sneaks onto the roof of that apartment building. And because he had worked there before, he knew all the routes and nobody usually came to the roof. Now he starts waiting for Monica to come. He had checked Monica's car several times since morning on October 5, 2016, but he couldn't see her car. By now, it had been almost two days since he had been hungry and thirsty on the roof. 
Around 3 to 3.30 in the afternoon on October 5, 2016, he comes down again and rings the bell of Monica's flat. Monica asks from inside who it is, and he introduces himself as the security supervisor. After that, when Monica opens the door, Rajkumar pushes her forcefully and closes the door from inside. Before Monica could understand anything, he takes out a knife from his pocket and threatens her, saying that if she screams, he will stab her. But even when Monica shouts loudly, Rajkumar covers her mouth with his hand, and he takes her to the bedroom, then, frightening her, he controls her. After that, he forcefully takes Monica to the bedroom with the knives and makes her lie on the bed. First, he ties both her hands behind her back and then ties both her legs to the bed. Now Rajkumar demands money from her at knife point. Monica gets very scared and says to take all the money from her purse. After that, Rajkumar rummages through her purse and of 4,000 come out of it. But Rajkumar is not satisfied and more money. So Monica says that she only has this much money right now. If you need more money, take my debit card from my purse and withdraw money from the ATM. But Rajkumar doesn't know how to use a debit card, so Monica explains to him how to withdraw money. She tells him to swipe it like this, then listen to the language or enter the PIN, and she even tells him the PIN number of the debit card. Monica thinks that now Rajkumar will leave from here. But Rajkumar stuffing cloth into Monica's mouth and tying her hands and legs. After tying her up and stuffing cloth into her mouth, when he feels assured that Monica can't do anything, he leaves from there with great satisfaction and then goes to the kitchen. He drinks water, boils eggs, cooks them, and then eats comfortably. He wasn't in a hurry to eat because he knew that Monica lived alone in that flat. He eats with great satisfaction, taking out ice cream again, then eating chocolate. He satisfies all his hunger and thirst, which he had been suffering from on the roof for two days. All this happened around 12 o'clock at night, when his stomach was full. So he reaches back to Monica. After forcefully obtaining Monica's phone, which was secured with a screen lock, he resorted to threats to coerce her into disclosing the password. Feeling utterly helpless, Monica reluctantly surrendered the code. With malicious intent, he proceeded to access a pornographic website on her device, exposing her to three explicit videos against her will. Monica found herself in a harrowing situation, overwhelmed with fear and desperation, unable to escape his control. Rajkumar, driven by his twisted desires, then proceeded to undress Monica and subject her to a horrifying assault. As the hours passed by, Monica's sense of fear grew stronger realizing that Rajkumar had no intention of letting her go. Lost in his own darkness, Rajkumar acted out his sick fantasies, ignoring Monica's pleas for mercy. Eventually, Rajkumar became aware of the potential consequences of his actions if Monica were to report him to the authorities. Fearing exposure and punishment, he made the chilling decision to silence Monica forever, using brute force. He suffocated her, snuffing out her life without remorse. Following the High Noose Act, Raikumar calmly went about his routine, leaving Monica's lifeless body behind. Under the cover of darkness, he fled the scene and evaded capture for several hours. However, his attempts to escape justice were short-lived, as law enforcement authorities caught him in Bangalore after he withdrew money from an ATM. The police, shocked by the brutality of Rajkumar's crimes, meticulously gathered evidence to build a case against him. On January 6, 2017, they filed a comprehensive charge sheet, citing Rajkumar's offenses under various sections of the Indian Penal Code, including murder, rape, and robbery. As the legal proceedings continue in court, the full extent of Rajkumar's depravity and the tragic loss of Monica's life weigh heavily on all involved. This scary story reminds us how dangerous it is when someone becomes too obsessed and the terrible things that can happen because of it. Take care until the next story. Thank you for listening.